Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and we're back today to continue our journey through Pokemon Platinum as I try to see if you can beat the game using teams drawn from my collection of Pokemon cards. We match levels with our opponent exactly and take them on in a set battle with no items allowed. After taking down Candice in the last episode, we're back to deal with what remains of Team Galactic. Our first battle of the episode will be against Saturn, so we're gonna need to draw a team of three. It looks like we'll be using Glamiao, Snowrunt, and Wailord. Alright, that's a pretty decent team, and the typings actually aren't bad at all. Let's see how our movesets are shaping up. Firstly, we've got Flake the Snowrunt, who's at level 44, and he's got Crunch, Protect, Hail, and Ice Fang. Next up, we've got GG the Glamiao, who's at level 42, with Slash, Hypnosis, Charm, and Sucker Punch. I don't really care for Perugly, but I always feel bad that Glamia has basically only appeared in Pearl. So this is his chance to prove his worth. Anyway, last up is Blubber the Waylord, who's also at 42, and his moveset's made up of Water Spout, Rest, Spine, and Sir. Alright, let's give this a go. The battle begins with Saturn's Golbat facing off against Snowrunt. This is basically just a contest to see who's got the stronger jaw. Golbat sinks her teeth into Flake to start things, leaving him poisoned, but before she can retreat, he counters by chomping down on her wing. Although the poison will have a long-lasting effect, it's pretty clear that Snowrunt has come out on top from the battle's first clash. Clearly, Saturn recognises this too, because as Flake closes the distance to go for another Ice Fang, the Galactic Commander makes a switch out to Bronzor. Flake's teeth almost shatter as he clamps down on the Steel-type, and as the poison is still eating away at him, we make a switch of our own. Glamiao leaps out of his Pokeball, eating a Gyro Ball right as he lands on the battlefield, so not the best start. Recovering quickly though, GG uses Hypnosis, connecting to put Bronzor to sleep. A thud rings around the room as Bronzor hits the ground, and Glamiao follows it up with an aptly named Sucker Punch. A second swipe isn't enough for the knockout, but it is sufficient to wake up Bronzor. It floats back towards the ceiling as it sends another Gyro Ball crashing into GG. Both Pokemon are getting close to their limit now as they exchange attacks once more, leaving one another on the cusp of fainting. Thankfully, Saturn hasn't worked out my strategy yet and calls for Gyro Ball, which means GG Sucker Punch can happily land, earning him the knockout. That took a while, but we finally have the lead. Toxic Rook replaces the fainted Bronzor, and suspecting we'll still have the speed advantage, I call for Hypnosis. Glamiao succeeds, putting Toxic Rook to sleep, and with that, we can swap him out for our final team member. Waylord enters the battle, and suddenly this room is making everyone feel a little bit claustrophobic. While Toxicroak is sleeping, Blubber can use a full-powered water spout, so let's just hope the Lake Guardians can breathe underwater. I can't, so as the door bursts open and the room slowly drains, I have to surface to call for another water spout. Golbat's on the other side of the room just thrashing and screeching, which is apparently how she uses a Confuse Ray while trying not to drown. Everyone involved is secretly thankful when Blubber breaks through confusion and throws his whole headfirst into the ceiling with another powerful water spout. It knocks out me, Charon, Saturn, and Golbat all in one, handing us a rather painful win. Once the room is drained and everyone is conscious again, Saturn agrees to let me free the late guardians, just wanted to put the whole thing behind him. I sort of lost myself in that one, let's just move on, yeah? The next battle on my list will take place at the Spear Pillar atop Mount Coronet. In my opinion, this double battle against Mars and Jupiter is one of the most frustrating battles in Pokemon Platinum. Not because it's difficult, but because Barry is an infuriating battle partner. We need three for our half of the team, so let's see how Natu, Shinx, and Vaporeon fare. Another team with two first stage Pokemon and one strong water type. That should be enough to get through this if Barry's willing to cooperate. Let's check out our moves. Uma the Natu is at level 44, and her moveset's made up of Psychic, Confusory, Wish, and Ominous Wind. Next up is Simba the Shinx, who's also at 44, and he's got the moves Spark, Swagger, Thunderfang, and Crunch. Very bitey episode thus far. Our final team member is Reva the Vaporeon, who at level 46 has the moves Surf, Sand Attack, Aqua Ring, and Aurora Beam. The difficulty level here will largely come down to Barry, so let's see how this goes. Mars and Jupiter send out their pair of Bronzor to start the battle, and Barry and I call on Munchlax and Natu respectively. I hate this Munchlax. Let's see if it's as annoying as usual today. We call for Ominous Wind as Mars and Jupiter set up a Reflect and Light screen, and Barry contributes a stockpile. I quite literally despise him. After like two minutes of Natu running solo while Barry refuses to attack, a crit gyro ball takes us down to two. After Uma faints, Munchlax hits himself in confusion, meaning he's literally attacked our team more than he has theirs. Anyway, Reva enters the battle with one central goal in mind. Get rid of this damn Munchlax. 
Zerg washes away one Bronzor and badly damages the other, but sadly Munchlax takes it pretty well. Munchlax hits himself in confusion yet again, so he's now attacked our team twice, and their team, well, never. Mars or Jupiter send out their Golbat next, who's immediately taken in by Reva's Surf, fall into a crit, but again Bronzor and Munchlax survive. Extra Sensory hits Vaporeon and she barely notices, but she almost faints at the pure shock of watching Munchlax execute an attack. Body Slam chips away Bronzor's single remaining hit point for Barry's first contribution. This is basically every group project ever. Perugly and Skuntank enter the battle and after a slash from Mars' ace, Munchlax has no chance of surviving Reva's Surf. It also badly damages Perugly and crit one shot Skuntank, but the main thing is, it got rid of Munchlax. Barry sends out his Heracross next, so we should be good now. Unfortunately, Perugly strikes with an aerial ace, so Surf scores another double knockout. Sorry Barry, I'm not even sure who's the worst teammate out of the two of us. Golbat enters the battle for the Galactic Commanders, Barry sends in his Star Raptor, and as we're reaching the end, we make a switch out to Shinx. That means Golbat is double intimidated, so pretty elite accident for me and Barry there. Simba doesn't even get to do anything in the end. A couple of takedowns from the speedy Star Raptor are too much for Golbat, so we've won, but we are a truly terrible team. I put most of the blame on him, but as I knocked out two of his Pokemon, I will admit that I may also be a small bit at fault. Just a small bit, though. Now that we've defeated all 40 Galactic Commanders, it's time to head into the Distortion World and hunt down Cyrus. The last three times I've done this battle, it's been with a single mind junior, a team that can only use Bide, and a team full of unknowns, so there's virtually no chance that this will be as bad as those. I've been through so much in this battle that we can really only improve. We have to draw five cards and we're going to be using the team of Flareon, Rotom, Roselia, Nosepass, and Geodude. That's actually not too bad. Maybe it's just because I'm comparing it to a team full of weak psychic types or bide users, but I think this is fairly strong. As far as movesets go, we've got Wilson the Nosepass at level 46, and he's equipped with Rock Slide, Thunder Wave, Rest, and Sandstorm. Inenia the Rotom's level higher at 47 and has Shockwave, Double Team, Thunder Wave, and Ominous Wind. Back at level 46, Sunsprite the Roselia is equipped with Petal Dance, Toxic, Synthesis, and Giga Drain. One level lower again, Infernus the Flareon has Quick Attack, Sand Attack, Bite, and Fire Fang in his moveset. Lastly, Howdy Doody the Geodude's at level 48, and he's got Stone Edge, Double Edge, Explosion, and Earthquake. You can have so much fun with the Geodude. Okay, let's do this. Cyrus starts the battle by sending out his Houndoom, and we call on Nosepass. Dark Pulse immediately throws the rock type into the platform above, but gravity is kind of off in the distortion world, so he lands on his feet. Now that he's out of Houndoom's eyeline, Wilson sends a series of rocks flying up into and simultaneously crashing down onto the Demon Dog. It falls just short of the knockout, and as Nosepass returns to his starting position, Cyrus uses a full restore. While Houndoom's recovering, Nosepass attacks again with Rock Slide, narrowly failing to one shot once again. Knowing the end is coming for Houndoom, Cyrus calls for Will-O-Wisp, and although it burns Nosepass, it can't stop Rock Slide. Houndoom is the first Pokemon to fall, handing us the early lead. The Galactic Boss sends out his Gyarados next, and there's no real point in making a switch for us. Waterfall briefly soothes Wilson, who's still burning, but then a rampaging Gyarados crashes into him, which is admittedly less soothing. Nosepass faints, but that was a pretty great showing. We replace him with Rotom, who's electro type, and makes this one pretty simple. Inenia's shockwave zaps Gyarados and the voltage is too much for him. The water flying type goes down in one to leave Cyrus with only three. Weavile's up next though, so it's another rather unfavorable matchup for us. We call for a thunder wave and cross our fingers. Weavile's Night Slash knocks back Rotom, but importantly doesn't knock it out. Cyrus demands more of his ace though, so he breaks through the paralysis to land another Night Slash, tying things up once again. The paralysis puts us in control though. Flareon sets down on the expansive battlefield and thanks to Rotom's hard work can strike first with a fire fang. There's a cry of pain from Weavile who can't handle the super effective attack and quickly faints. Cyrus begrudgingly returns Weavile to his Pokemon and then sends out his Haunch Crow who's confused by the setting and flies straight into Infernus. The fire fang that he latches on with is enough to force Haunch Crow to flinch. While he's frozen there, Flareon repeats the attack and just like that, Cyrus is down to one. Crobat is sent in, and to get this one over the line, he'll have to win a 1 on 3. Cross Poison almost makes it a perfect start for him as a critical hit leaves Flareon on the brink of fainting. Powering through, he flicks whatever coats the ground of the distortion world into Crobat's eyes and then goes for a fire fight. 
Thanks to Grobat becoming a walking, well, flying idiom and missing the cross poison, Inferno slams the attack, dealing some good damage. Given the close proximity, Crobat has more margin for error and lands cross poison to take it down to a 1 on 2. We send in Roselia, who really doesn't have any good attacks to use on Crobat, so we just call for a Giga Drain. Through squinted eyes, Crobat actually succeeds with Confuse Ray, but it makes no difference. Sunsprite breaks through, scoring a hit with Giga Drain, but Crobat barely notices. We make another switch, hoping Geodude will be better able to deal damage against a flying type. Expecting Roselia to be on the other end of it, Crobat sends an air slash cutting into Howdy Doody, but he really isn't bothered. As Roselia made it out alive, we're able to call for explosion, so do just that. Crobat goes for another air slash, but it's not enough. Geodude detonates, and the entire distortion world takes notice. That's just me, Cyrus, Cynthia, and Giratina, really, but still. It knocks out Crobat to hand us the win, meaning we're all done with Team Galactic and can finally move on to the last gym. After leaving the Distortion World and returning to Sinnoh, we head for Sunnyshore City where Volkner is waiting. We'll need a team of four, which you can see now in the top right corner. That abomination is what would happen if you fuse our team into one, taking one corner from each. You can pause the video right now and try to guess all four, but I'd be shocked if anyone gets them all. The left side is okay, the right side, not so much. Alright, as I'm sure you could all tell, we'll be using the team of Corsola, Murkrow, Ghastly, and Whiskash. As far as things go, that's a pretty middling team for Volkner. Whiskash is a great draw, but Murkrow and Corsola are definitely going to struggle. Let's take a look at the movesets. We may as well start with Kunu the Corsola, who's at level 46 with Surf, Aqua Ring, Recover, and Ancient Power. Poe the Murkrow is also at 46, and he's got Sucker Punch, Nightshade, Wing Attack, and Assurance. Zarat the Ghastly is up next at level 48, and he knows Shadow Ball, Confuse Ray, Curse, and Destiny Bond. Finally, we've got Vibrissa the Whiskash at level 50, and she's equipped with Earthquake, Rest, Snore, and Aqua Tail. This could genuinely be an issue. Let's see if Whiskash can get us through this. Volkner throws out his first Pokeball releasing Jolteon, and we send out Corsola. This isn't going to be pretty. We call for Kunu to use Surf, but Jolteon's Charge Beam lands first. Luckily, it's one of the weaker electric attacks, so Corsola's okay. Surf does more or less the same amount of damage, but that'll be all she wrote. Another Charge Beam knocks out Kunu, but more worrying than that, it raises Jolteon's special attack for the second time. As that's pretty scary, we send out Ghastly, who outspeeds Jolteon, sending a Shadow Ball crashing into him. After the damage from Kunu's Surf, it's enough for the knockout, so go team! Who needs Whiskash? Volkner sends out his Luxury next, and Zarat's confidence is sky high, so he tackles Shadow Ball yet again. It makes its mark on Luxury, but the crunch he counters with is pretty devastating. I really should have gone for Destiny Bomb there. Well, live and learn. We send in Murkrow next, hoping one Sucker Punch will be enough, as it's all but guaranteed to strike first. Sadly, it falls just short, and Luxury's Ice Fang easily one-shots Poe. With a frozen bird, a half-eaten gas ball, and a fried piece of coral, it seemed that we do in fact need Whiskash. Can she do what Crobat couldn't? Volkner breaks out a Hyper Potion as soon as Vibrissa enters, so it will be a full strength 1 on 3. Whiskash starts things with an earthquake that causes the entire gym to shake, presumably breaking all the mechanisms that make the gym puzzles work. On top of that, it's simply too much for Luxray, who's knocked out. Electivire is up next, and now that Volkner knows what he's up against, Quick Attack is the first move we face. Vibrissa takes the hit really well though, then sets herself and causes another earthquake. There are literally just giant gears bouncing off the walls at this point, and thanks to a critical hit, Electivire faints just like Luxray. Raichu is called on last, and Volkner really knows how dire the situation is now. He calls for Focus Blast with Raichu fast enough to attack first, and although Whiskash is thrown backwards by it, even a critical hit isn't enough. Vibrissa uses Earthquake once more, and the entire gym begins to collapse. Raichu's buried under the fallen debris, so Volkner just tosses us a beacon badge and nopes out of there. Everything is falling apart around him, metaphorically and literally. Anyway, good win for us, go team Whiskash, and uh, yeah, let's move on. Usually I'd call it at 4 battles, but we're sort of on a roll here, so let's keep it going. After travelling through Victory Road, we've made it to the Pokemon League, where our final series of battles will take place. Before taking on the Elite Four and Champion though, we've got one last battle with Barry in front of us. For the first 6 on 6 battle of the series, we'll be using the team of Meditite, Pidgeot, Luminion, Golduck, Unknown, and Machamp. That's a really great team, honestly. Let's look through the movesets. 
Up first, we've got Quack the Golduck, who's at level 48 with the moves Psychic, Screech, Disable, and Surf. Next up is Durondor the Pidgeot at level 47, and his moveset's made up of Quick Attack, Sand Attack, Roost, and Wing Attack. Wanda the Luminion's up third and at level 49, she's got Surf, Rain Dance, Aqua Ring, and Attract. Kano the Machamp's at level 51, and he's equipped with Dynamic Punch, Bowl Cut, Low Kick, and Cross Chop. At level 48, we've got Yogi the Metatite, who's got High Jump Kick, Detect, Recover, and Force Palm. Finally, because people really wanted it, we've got Enter the Unknown at level 47, and it's just got Hidden Power. That's an Electro-type Hidden Power, so it might just come in handy. Alright, one last time. Let's get into it. The battle begins with Barry Staraptor facing off against our Golduck. Quack starts by sending a wave crashing into the bird, who's rather limited indoors. After living through the surf with a sliver of health, Staraptor counters with a U-turn to just get out of there as soon as physically possible. Roserade is Barry's chosen replacement, which probably seems smart on its surface, but our Golduck knows Psychic. The attack throws Roserade backwards over the counter of the Pokemon Center, but he recovers in time to use Giga Drain. The attack almost saps the remainder of Quack's health, but he lives, and one more blast of Psychic gives us the first win of the match. Staraptor comes back out next, which makes no sense. Barry knows he's slower than Golduck, but I guess he's okay with the sacrifice? Surf washes him away to put us up by two, and Barry brings out his third team member, Rapidash? What is he on right now? Empoleon and Snorlax are both available here, so maybe he's trying to lose? Another Surf lands for a one-shot, but thankfully the Pokemon League have experienced this before, so the water filters out before we're overcome. Heracross is next in line, which is again the only Pokemon Barry has left against whom we have a super effective option. Luckily for him, I couldn't remember whether or not Bug resisted Psychic, so opted for Surf instead. Maybe he was counting on me being dumb? Anyway, Heracross finally eliminates Golduck with a Night Slash, which will be extra satisfying after I knocked him out of the Spear Pillar. We call on Pidgeot next, who strikes with a quad effective wing attack that obliterates Heracross, so his satisfaction was rather short lived. Snorlax is next out for Barry, so we're going back to back against the two Pokemon who hate me most. After a sand attack connects, the newly evolved Snorlax is keen to prove his ability to attack and crushes the Rondor with a body slam. It's not enough for a knockout, but at least in Paralyzed, so his race is probably run. We make another switch out to Meditite, who's immediately swallowed up by Snorlax's enormous body. Clearly, he's got a point to prove. With Yogi Paralyzed too, we're forced to switch again, this time bringing out our big gun. Machamp can't avoid Snorlax's crunch thanks to No Guard, but that also means he cannot miss with Dynamic Punch. The big hit sucks all the air out of Snorlax, who's thrown backwards, landing on Barry. Recalling the fainted behemoth, Barry sends out his final Pokemon, Empoleon, and then clambers to his feet. We also make a switch, calling on Luminion as we're into our victory lap at this point. Wanda's Surf isn't very effective, but it's all about making a point now. Although I know a Shadow Claw is coming, we swap Luminion for Enter the Unknown. Heroically, it lives the attack and counters with a hidden power, but even though it's super effective, it really doesn't hurt Empoleon much. Brian finishes off the unknown E, so we bring Kano back in and call for Dynamic Punch again. The fully evolved Water Starter falls under the weight of the punch and collapses to the ground. Barry follows suit, failing to get one last bit of revenge. With our rival defeated for the final time, we can move on to the Pokemon League proper, but I'm gonna save that for next time. If all goes to plan, then I'll try to beat the entire Elite Four and Champion in one video, but I'm certain it won't be easy. That'll do it for a pretty lengthy episode of our Sinnoh Random Car Challenge. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.